and we are live with session 14 of Out of the Abyss, 5th edition D&D. When last we met, uh, I think we were missing somebody. Or did we have everybody? I think we had everyone last yeah. time, but we were but, uh, I don't remember who though. No, it was like it was like two two sessions ago. We were missing. To, yeah, to, well, when I joined, uh, we were missing somebody. Okay, uh, Xandor. Yeah, we were missing Xandor. Yeah. So, who Gen would Cal. like to remind us what happened last time? Last time we were in the process of uh, attempting to locate a thieves guild. Um, First, went and saw the giant. Sorry, what was that? First, he went and saw the giant. And he uh, no, was the giant before that? Or we went and we met, we went and we talked to the giants. Yeah, you went uh, last and talked to the giants. And yeah, you yeah. some stuff? Some gems, some stuff? Yes, yes. And then we went and we were trying to find the Thieves Guild. Um... Which, uh, didn't... We did, did some weird stuff last time and didn't really accomplish anything we were trying to. Uh, da, da, da. We saved a merchant from getting shanked. We did. And, and then... The one. And we killed several psychic uh, dwarf assassins who were after him for unknown reasons. Uh... Um, then we went to uh, a, also a diff separate group of us found another merchant who was attempting to smuggle stolen gems. And we think we thought they were trying to find each other. So we set up a meeting. They were not trying to find each other, uh, but apparently could do business anyway. Um, there was a bout of temporary insanity, I think, um... at the at the bar. I don't remember. And also, we got a job to deliver something to Blinkton Stone. Yeah, I wrote that down. Uh, delivery to Blinkton Stone. Um, I don't know why I wrote Kazook Pickshine. That is the person uh, you need is... to deliver to. Yes. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, Dorhun gave us a rod shard of polished quartz crystal that's linked. To the library of Grave Hollow. It needs to be attuned to to uh, use it to speak with animals, plants, and the dead with charges. Um, uh, that was pretty nice. Um, I don't know which one of us has it, but they should attune to it when they can. Rakuk um, Rook has it, I think. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, and you attuned okay. to it. Uh, and you okay. used it. That was right. That was I was going to ask beforehand because yeah. I only had one attuned item, and I was like wondering like. What was the other attuned item I had? And that was it. Okay, yeah. cool. Yes, that was the fight to tell you you attuned to it during your long rest. You did, you <laughs> took a long rest and can yep. attune to it. Yep. Not I remember the that short rest now. mechanic yep. of you can't do crap while attuning. Yeah, I was wrong. Yep. And me and Giselle just I... went around doing almost nothing. I don't remember if the Giants wanted us to do anything else. I don't remember what they I was gave us, They gave us a prophecy. They uh, pay, pay heed to the signs around you. A cave with two faces. Rock devoured the land over. Rock devoured the land overgrown. The pebble bleeds itself flesh. The earth rejects its wards, and the tunnels shake in fury. By these portents, you shall know of evil's presence and of evil's face. This is what the stones tell me. Uh, so yeah, we, we have that. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing with that, but we have it. Uh, is it listed on a note on twenty? No, that that was what the giants told us. Okay, we should probably add that to a note on roll twenty. Oh, I just have my notes, but didn't so, but I more pay, pay, pay. didn't I paste it in Discord? Yes. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, and then we were off to find the. The guy with the weird hat and tentacles. 
hang it from. Yes, I think we eventually we did manage to actually identify who we were looking for after much trial and tribulation. Uh, and then yeah, we saw him like in the slums or something, and then never actually met him. Didn't know who it was at the time. Yeah, we yeah, because the stealth team was trying to get to him, but we kind of got lost in the crowd. And then yeah, the other team, team, loud team, eventually saw them, and we both just went, oh, no, we both saw the same guy. Good. A man with very nice hats. I think we were headed in the direction we last saw him go, right? Thought we doubled back somewhere else, but maybe I'm not remembering right. We did with the I merchant. I, I think we ended off talking to the merchant. Yeah. Okay, and then we cool. were going to go track him down. Trokey, that's the guy. Well, anybody got any ideas? Well, we should, uh, next time we see that guy, we should go ahead and uh, talk to him. But until then, like, I mean, we did just run into him moving around the area. Taroki. Are we trying to find him again? He's got something to do with the dragon and the whole... Uh, okay, whole okay. Uh, he was a messenger of the Grey Ghosts and someone that we might be able to get in, that we might be able to talk to who would give us information on where to find the dragon egg that they stole. Got it, that okay. Was what, that was what the dragon wanted. Have we heard anything about other, like, people looking for the dragon egg? Like, is this even a thing that's well known, or is this pretty much just us hmm. and this guy? Nobody's mentioned it, and we have not brought it up to anybody, and that's probably a good thing. We probably don't want to spread it around that we're looking for it. Alright. Now, I mean, but no, we haven't like heard from other people about it. Besides seeing him around through the town, you have been given the fact that he is often seen in the West Cleft district, which is. There are, uh, like, switchback paths that will traverse down to the bottom of this uh, ravine, or chasm. We do know there's mostly, what is it, Daros down there? Yes. Um, as far as the town goes, this is a Darrow town. Darrow... Duragar town. The Darrow used to be slaves and downtrodden, and they since revolted and gained their freedom, but they didn't really gain a better lifestyle, so they're still mostly relegated to the poor and decrepit parts, and a lot of that is down in the chasm. The Duragar don't like seeing them up on in their area, but they'll tolerate them at best. So, did anybody get any disguise ability? A mask. Not really what you asked, but... Yeah, disguise somebody self. can pretend to be a Daro. Uh, we're all kind of the wrong size for that. Yeah, otherwise we're just going to be stomping down there really, really, really noticeable. Uh, um, well, we could send, we could send the people with actual sneak scores and just have them, you know, stick to the shadows, try to stay at the site and avoid and avoid attention. Though I'm not sure how well it's going to work against a thieves guild. Yeah, oh, make the thieves. Yeah, should put a note about our intentions in our coin purses and just walk around. And this way, when they uh, when they inevitably pickpocket us, they can find out that we're trying. Ah, to yeah, that's work. Work. <laughs> that's clever. If you read I, mean, it, I have a decent obviously... sneak score just putting that out there, so <laughs> I think I might be able to fulfill that killer role. Alright, uh so yeah. Send the stealthy people down to try to find him and meet with him, see if you guys can out sneak the thieves guild. Yeah, but wouldn't they have like walkers that have things to like, see invisible? I mean, see, Invisible doesn't see through buildings. No, I know that, but, like, they're used to dealing with 
through guard trying to get down there and mess with them too sometimes, right? We're not so, invisible, right? We're just really stealthy. Yes, but Drugar yep. can turn invisible is my point. So mm-hmm. Oh. So yeah, don't don't rely on invisibility. They probably have some kind of mesh for that. You use good old good old fashioned sneaking. Yep. If you make a ghillie suit, then you don't have to worry about that stealth stuff. No, that would just look weird down here with all the leaves. Sorry, I don't think I put craft ghillie suit as part of my skills. A gravel suit. A good a good ghillie suit takes the area from there, so I just need garbage and some trash and a dead corpse on top, and boom. But now, uh, uh, yeah, Valis can sneak around if... Okay, well, is there any help that you need from us? Uh... How would I notify you if we, like, if things go bad? Uh, communication like stone, if we can find them? We got one, one half of a set. Well, then we have them for sale. Yeah, maybe we can swap out these bracers' defense for some sending stones. Yeah. Well, I think oh, we still got uh, money left, don't we? I have telepathic speech, where... I guess I'll just read the whole thing. Uh, choose a creature you can see within 30 feet of you. You can... You and the chosen creature can speak telepathically for each other while you're within four miles of each other. The connection lasts for five minutes. So if I'm just oh, smoking somewhere, you have five uh, minutes. You come back every couple of minutes and like. Uh yeah, five minutes is a that's that's a short duration if there if this is a complicated trip at all. Yeah. Yeah, just don't get you know kidnapped at six minutes. I'm assuming this is going to be like kind of a stakeout kind of thing. They're probably going to need to be down there for a few hours. How much money do we have left? Da, da, da. You might have got some gems too, right? So. Yeah, about about three grand. Well, let's go find out how much a pair of speaking stones cost. Sure. So, Rock to see the drow again? Or the Drugar who sold me the javelin? One of the magic item vendors? Oh, okay, go, we're gone. I, I, I don't know any merchants down here. I've just been surviving off the crap I brought, so... All right. Do I have Oh, there it is. There is the party token. Take it where you wish to be going. Okay. So we're trying to go back to where we were previously. Is that right? Like the little underground section and stake it out and then hopefully uh, meet some people in another way. To, they wanted to get sending stones, so. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so the dark elves. Communicate and... with them. Those are up top, I think. Yeah, one yeah. of those buildings. All right. All right, so you uh, were you going to the Drow then, or going to the Durgar that sold the javelin? Well, let's try the Durgar first. All right, okay. you can find the Durgar. She did have a stable shop. Yep. Okay. Is he open? Uh, yes, it is open. Okay. Knock and enter. Uh, upon going in, you see she is 
um, kind of relaxing. There are a couple of other Duragar in here at the moment that she is talking to. And she glances over and makes a gesture to the one she's talking to as she then calls out. I'll be with you in a moment. Okay. And Let's browse. She finishes the transaction. She hands over a, a few bars, small bars of gold and takes something in, wrapped in cloth. And then uh, they leave. Is it a large item that she took? That she takes? No. Okay, so something like a piece of jewelry size. Kind of a maybe a eight inch by eight inch by three or four inch bundle ish. Okay. Just curious. Okay. Approach her and say, um, oh, hello again. Back. Thank How you. is the um, javelin treating you? I, I've only had cause to use it once so far, and it behaved honorably. Um, we are currently looking for a pair of speaking stones. I see. She will um, wait here, please. She stands up with her bundle and walks to a door, slips through it. Hey, Allison, do you have the, the gems that the giant gave us? Yes, and also these. Pull out the bracers of defense and also some cash as well. I think we have a lot of cash, I thought. Didn't we like top off the 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 thingy? The... No, we spent a whole lot as well. Oh, okay, good. So yeah, we've got about like two 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 point three grand in cash and about seven hundred in gemstones from the giant. Okay, cool. She comes back a few moments later with a um, chest. It seems to have a bit of marking on the top that isn't really a language, but apparently it is something that she denotes. And she sets it down, opens it up. And uh, there are a few items inside of which uh, the obvious bits are uh, three potions and a scroll, as well as a pair of stones. Are there potions you remember from our last visit? Does not look like it. No, none of these. Uh, one of them looks like you've seen others like it, but not that you sold or did anything with. Okay. Well, are those the stones? Yes. I don't know how they work. Do they? Upon activation, or like of charges, or what? Uh, you can use them once a day. And when one person activates on one side, you can use it to cast the sending spell from it. Okay. And the yeah. person that you send it to can respond, and then they can also activate theirs. So you get basically two messages per day. 
do can like if if one of them is lost, can can the other one still be of use? Mm. They work in a pair. If one of them is lost, you'd have nobody to send a message to. Okay, so they only work to each other, and you can't yes, like reattune yes. them and bind them or anything. Now, if somebody were to find the other one, they could then send a message to the pair, the mate. Okay. So, how much do they go for? I... She considers you a bit. Um, why don't you make me a charisma check? You can do persuasion if you have it. Uh, 12. And uh, let me see. Did I take persuasion? No. So I got a 12. Not that great. I can part with them for 300 gold pieces. Oh, okay. That's an extreme reasonable price. All right, yeah. Do you like gems? Of course. Who doesn't? <laughs> I, I point to my cousin. Yes. I'll pull out uh, six of those gems you're given by the giant. Uh, ones worth roughly 50 gold pieces each. And... This be sufficient? Excellent quality. Uh, from stone giants. Yeah, she takes them each and examines them and nods appreciatively. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, these will do. While you're here, can I interest you in perhaps a... And she picks up uh, the potions. What are they? Uh, this one here is... She picks up a potion with crimson liquid that every once in a while pulses with like a very dull light. This one here is a potion of vitality. It helps to recuperate if you are feeling exhausted, plus it should wash away any diseases or poisons affecting you. And how much would you get, would you sell it for? Mm, she considers why don't you give me a persuasion check? <laughs> because I'm very bad at persuasion, that's why. Unfortunately, I'm talking, so here we go. Oh, 18! Never mind, I'm the best at this. Best he's ever been. Yeah, that is very good. <laughs> oh, normally for something like this, I would say 3,000, but... You have been very decent customers. Uh, 1,000. Potion? It's just, I mean, I, okay, I guess being able to cure any kind of poison or disease is something that would be really useful. 700. Pinch, but 700, okay. Take it. Uh, yeah, sure. Alright, I'll go ahead and pull out the, the other eight gemstones. And uh, as well as 300 gold and or 30 platinum. All right, and we'll take that as well. Motion of vitality, sure. And uh, while we're here, do you have any special arrows? Special in what way? Uh, look at my archer friend.
she glances of? over. <laughs> just staring at me and Giselle there with our bows. Yeah. <laughs> I was just needing normal arrows. I mean, if you have anything that can help with, I don't know, making sure someone stays down, goes down quicker, that's always beneficial to me. Maybe like a poison? Well, I don't deal in poison. There are paralytic poisons. That might do your trick. Or you have anything to make it so we don't need to use arrows. That's a bit official. I just thought one of you two might be able to think of something you'd be interested in. Oh, as of right now, no. Just a way to communicate in case things go south or, you know, we get any information. That's all we that's need. Okay. At least that's all I need. I don't want to speak for you. But... No, I'm pretty much the same here. Uh, how... She takes a moment, walks uh, past you to the door, locks the door. comes back how much are you able to spend because I do have a few things that will help take things down quicker but they are uh, by necessity very pricey uh, very pricey probably ever I think we've got I think we've got a thousand left in our budget right now you just see Valis looking at his own coin purse, only 10 gold pieces. I got a 10 on me. That's it. Yeah, I think very, very pricey kind of out of our price range right now. Yeah. But if it needs okay. to be done, that could negate the price. If we stumble into some money, we'll be back, though, probably. Well, I do have, uh, or rather, I could have them. I don't actually have them here with me. But I do have three particular arrows. Unfortunately, I must sell them for 10,000 each because of the nature. The, one yeah, 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 yeah. is for giant slaying, one is for dragon slaying. Uh, oh. Both of which <laughs> probably yeah, yeah, have to have here. Super, super illegal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just make sure I never heard that. One is for fiend slaying. That's probably pretty popular right now. now for the less pricey things I do have some uh, limited amounts of arrows that when when they impact they will uh, burst into flame very minor flame right, reason I brought my friend uh is there any chance that arrow of fiend slaying? Is there any chance you would be willing to exchange it for these? And I'll pull out the bracers of defense. And explain, you know, the minor abjuration helps the unarmored. Varies for mages, of course. If you have any clients, they'd, they'd of course be interested in these. I could reduce the price. I, I think we'll have to discuss this a little bit more when we get back. Yes, uh, it might be perhaps. I'd still... I really want that arrow, but... You can really? just assume okay. that they're probably not going to be selling that thing since it's so expensive, and she's asking random people about it, and just hope that we can... <laughs> oh, we're not random people. At this point. No, no, we're strangers from out of town who showed up with massive piles of money and gifts from stone giants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, okay, maybe I, not I, random people. <laughs> I, I, we'll be back if we run into any uh, generous supply of funds, probably. But, uh, but we're yeah. adventurers. Give us a couple of, uh, I don't know. Give us, about every 15 minutes, someone important tells us to do something and offers us a fantastic amount of money, so, you know. <laughs> uh, 
Exactly. As, as for the flaming arrows, I do have 10 of them available. Each one is 100 gold pieces. And is there like a mechanical reason we need these? I'm just trying to think out loud here because it doesn't seem the most yeah, useful I mean, to me. If we oh, run no. it so we won't roll the fire, we do a lot of damage. But honestly, we can kind of just live without them. Yeah. If, uh... I'm good without them. It was just. Yeah, yeah I'm honestly kind of good without them too. Alright, cool. We need him, yeah. Uh, okay. What does the fiend slaying do? Do we know what the mechanics are for that? Because 10,000 is still a lot. Uh, arrows like, of instant slaying. Just a ton of damage. When a creature of the type takes damage from the arrow, they must make a constitution saving throw or take an extra 6d10 damage. Yeah, it's pretty useful. Yeah, I think we can take our leave at this point. Uh, you guys want to do it in the morning, or you want to try what's, something else? What's, what's morning? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I guess you know. Does anyone need Does anyone need a long rest before you go do things? I'm fine. I'm a fighter. I'm good. I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what a long rest is, actually. Thank the merchant, and let's head out. She will unlock the door for you. Okay. Please, if you find anything that may be of interest or perhaps need anything else, come again. I'll do. Thank you. Come again. Okay, the rest of us could probably find like a bar near the the down ramp that we the downward path, right? Yeah, the well, yeah. Somewhere we can hang out without it being too uh, yeah. too noticeable for significant periods of time. Those, the two of us that can self will go risk their lives for the greater good or greater wealth. Or so a dragon isn't upset at us. Greater good. Yeah, the not just going to be alive. It's kind of the we, we wouldn't want point. the dragon to be upset, would we? Sounds like a bad idea. The law requires that I answer no. Uh, while you guys are talking about your plans, uh, Obzam. So you guys are like coming out of the merchant shop. So up towards the lake, ducking, not ducking purposefully, but just disappearing behind the corner of that building. Happens to be a rather short person with a white magnificent beard and a much more magnificent hat. Ooh. That might be our man. That was him. That's the guy. Let's go. Uh, Castle quietly, Perkins. Quickly. <laughs> Wait, isn't he like some... Doesn't he like want to talk to us? He was like an informant, right? He's a courier. He's not an informant. He's a courier for the Thieves Guild. I thought... Wasn't he referenced to... I'm, okay, I'm trying to remember the circumstances he was referenced to us in. I thought he was referenced to us as... Like, this is a person who will talk to you about the, the no. Thieves Guild things. No. Okay, so we're going to need to capture him. It is a person that has been known to deal with the Thieves Guild that may be able to have... Uh, that you may be able to get info out of. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, well, in that case, uh, commence the abduction. I will, I will quickly um, point to the alley, say, that was him, right then. And then, okay. um, do we have anything like immobilizing that we could possibly. Yeah, and it'll be cast as soon as he's within sight and range, and that's my casting with some save thingy. I mean, I could just reach out and touch his brain. Oh, perfect! Ask him to stop. That'll work. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> rushing to the edge of that building then? Wherever the jars have sigh. So he might too. I have entangle. Okay, sounds like you got a few options. Well, uh. well let's try the one that's not going to piss him off immediately. I mean, if we just Which call out to him, is he going to run away or? Well, he like... disappeared behind the corner of a building about 120 feet away. 
All right. So yeah, we're okay. just going to have to hurry in that direction to try to catch up. Or if, or if we can figure out which way he was going, maybe cut him off. So cut him off wherever he's going. Ask the one of us. We're going to have to hurry. The dwarves will be following. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone want a jump spell? You know, just... I mean, I could take, like, what, a jump spell and just, I don't know, run after him. We're not having time to talk about this right now. We're in pursuit. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, if you want to take the jump spell and see if you can stay on the rooftops, I stay down low. Oh, that's a good suggestion. I'll t I'll do sure. that. I'll, ca I'll cast jump on Giselle and point the direction of the of the dude. All right. Yeah. I will hop on top of a building and start running after this guy. And I'll just start running through the crowd after this guy. Because <laughs> if you can get in front, uh -huh. I can stay behind and say, hey, you're not going anywhere. Top. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Let's do that. All right. What does the jump spell do for you? Ripples your jump distance for the next minute. Okay. What's your What's your strength score? Oh, um, that might be a problem. I might. Okay, maybe the ranger's better for this because I don't have a great strength. I have no benefits at all. Same. Perfect. I have a ten. So I mean that'll mean that'll mean that you without any kind of rolls can jump nine feet up and about uh thirty feet distant with this spell. Most of the buildings uh, I mean, here are I have good climbing. Too. I could just you know, like I have a seven acrobatics. I'm gonna have no issues once I'm even halfway up this thing. Do you have a native climb speed? Uh that's a good question. Because most of the buildings here are so. built into stalagmites and stalactites. Yeah, these give me any bonuses. Just don't think rooftop to rooftop is giving me much of a possibility. I mean, I don't know if this matters, but with Giant's Might, I could get advantage on strength check. Does that affect this well, at that all? That would give a. Uh, that would give you like a. Da, da, da. If you're to, if you had to make any athletics checks, then that would give you advantage on those. Um, but it wouldn't give you just straight up jump distance to get on to th get on top of things and travel. Well, I mean, I guess I can always use it in my back pocket, but this is probably okay for now, right? Like, if I could just get even some way up, I can just make a yeah, climb sure. I mean, the there's there's no way just ten being able to jump nine feet in the air is going to make pursuit more difficult. So it'll probably help a bit. Okay. So, how tall are these buildings exactly? Or at least the closest building? Uh, the one you were coming out of... So many of the buildings are probably in the uh, 20 to 30 feet high, but there are steps that you can do to jump, you know, up to the top of a wall, up to an overhang type of thing. Sure. Okay. So then in that case, I'm going to, uh, I guess I have 30 feet of movement, right? So um, is it possible I can... Uh, make successive movement rolls or jump checks to get to the top of this in one round, or is it going to take me multiple rounds? Um, movement distance will matter. So high jumping is, you said, 10 feet roughly, right? Yeah. And that will take uh, 30 feet of your movement to high jump, right? No, it's just, it's equal to the distance. The amount of space that you move, okay. So in 30 feet, you can jump up a few times to get 30 feet high. All the while, he is okay. getting 30 feet away. Okay, so we've got the ranger on the ground, right? Is that what the plan is? Uh, yeah. Let's go okay. The so I'm going to pull the ranger out.
Maybe. There you go. Oh. Well, not. It's kind of slow on the loading there. Probably because the map is so big. Mm -hmm. See if we can get Giselle out on the roof. Uh, what is Valis's constitution modifier? Uh, it is a plus two. Plus two, okay. What about Giselle's? Giselle is plus one. Okay. So, Valis, you can dash five times. Giselle can dash four times. After that, each dash is going to require a constitution saving throw or gain exhaustion. Hey, this isn't really a question about rules, it's more of a thematic question, but if I'm a big giant, does that affect my endurance at all? If you what? Like, I can transform into a giant and it gives advantage on strength checks. I know you said constitution, but is that gonna, like, thematically, can I get a bonus or something? Um, does it not to it? endurance, no. If it changes your strength at all, it'll change how far you can jump, though. Yeah, because you can make yeah. athletics check to jump greater distances. Uh, so right. advantage on that would be useful, but maybe. Would it be worth trying to action surge here and try to get this guy in shorter distances, assuming he can run really well? I, I could just to try to catch it before he even gets in a chase scenario. Oh, you're already in a chase scenario. Okay, then let's just yeah, run yeah, it down. Yeah, head start. See, so yeah, just gonna have to run it down. Oh, yeah, I had a scroll of dimension door. Is that a fourth level spell? It sure is. But yeah, uh, whenever it's go time, yeah, we'll chase it. Try after this and again. Um, until Giselle's token comes out, use the party token for yours. Okay, where is the party is the question. The, by the this thing? Yeah, for whatever reason, I can't get a token of yours out onto this map, so. The uh, scale is a oops is a bit longer than I'm going to use for the map, so I will keep it proportional. Okay. So is Valis dashing or just moving? Uh, no, he's going to dash after this guy. Okay. What about Giselle? Yeah, I'll dash. As best one can on the roof. Okay. So, in the time it takes you to get around the corner, you see him up ahead. He is... Um, it doesn't look like he is actively fleeing. He is just naturally moving at a quick pace, right? He is not dashing, but he is not meandering either. He's the courier. Uh, 
lost all my things when I reloaded my page, damn it. All right, so you guys are moving. He is uh, kind of weaving in and around of people. Giselle, you get to uh, the corner, and the next building seems to be within your jumping distance. Okay, I'll make the jump, or try to. With the jump spell, you do not do not need a check. Okay. All right, for the moment, um, Valis, you don't seem to be having any trouble getting past the crowds either. You now have uh, three more dashes. No, you have four more dashes, and Giselle has three more dashes. Are you going to dash again? Uh, yes. Okay. What about Giselle? Yeah, I'll dash again. Okay. Uh, for Giselle, on this next one, I need... <laughs> Uh, this is going to be an acrobatics check because the next rooftop you're going to be going across has a whole bunch of things that you then have to swing around and avoid and dodge. All right, let's see how this goes. Ooh, nice. Oh, okay, sweet. You do not seem to have any problem. He doesn't seem to notice you yet. Uh, again, are you going to use up another one of your dashes? Yes, please. All right. So you're going to be closing to within 60 feet. Uh, at this point, Giselle, you have a rooftop that is within jumping range, but it takes you kind of out of the, the way towards the, uh, sorry, south. Or you can get down onto the ground level. Whether a detour or uh, drop it to ground level? Can you say the last part again? I cut out. My mic died. The uh, the next building that is within jumping distance is to the south, so it's going to take you a bit out of your way, or you can go down to ground level. Um, how far away is he? Uh, right now, he is ninety feet away from Valis, a bit further from you because you had to go up. What do you think? Should I make a detour or not? Hard to say. Because... Uh, I think I'd stay on the roof. I think Valis is going to catch him first unless something strange happens, and in that case, someone on the roof is going to be valuable. Oh, I'll yeah. just stay on the roof then. So yeah, so I would like to make the slight detour. 
So you're going to end up down there, so the distance is going to be further from you now. All right, so as you get to 60 feet away, um, he seems to become aware that somebody is following him. Um, if he starts looking around, then yeah, Valis will do like a stealth check. Okay. Try to see if he can follow, but, you know, just amongst the crowd or in... Discreetly. Yes. Yeah. Lose a little distance, but keep him from dashing away from me. Or maybe he maybe he might lose some distance with uh, trying to look around. Sure. Oh come on! I'll go ahead and try to make a stealth. Mm. Oh, I mean, you do have inspiration. Sure. I... On the other hand, that's still an 11. A 1 isn't an auto failure, but... Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, I'll use the inspiration. Okay. So... Come on. Oh. You doubled your roll. Incredible. That is... That is truly astounding. All right. At this point, I need a flat d20 roll from Giselle and Vallis. All right, uh, Valis, not Valis, Giselle. Um, oh. At this point, you are forced to make a sharp turn to avoid colliding with something impassable, so I need a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity, you say? All right, you manage to avoid colliding with something. Uh, but you are at the point to where there is no other rooftop in sight that is reachable. Dang. So you will either have to stay here or drop down to the ground. Well, I guess I'm dropping to the ground because I don't have any other options. Okay. Uh, Droki is going to dash this time. I assume Valis is going to try dashing again. Uh, yeah. All right, Giselle, this is your last dash if you wish to use it. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, we should have gotten Tanglefoot arrows. I would have helped out as fast. So he's still going to maintain uh, the distance. He does not know where his pursuer is coming from. So you can keep him in sight. Uh, if you manage to keep him in sight, uh, obviously if you lose sight of him, he has a chance to hide. But right now, he has nothing that he can get behind because his hide check automatically fails because you've never lost sight of him yet. All right, at the end of this turn, I need another d20 roll from you both. Dang it. <laughs> All 
All right. Uh, the back alley that Giselle takes, you come across a pack of dogs fighting over food. Or in this case, probably not dogs, but a pack of other underdark animals fighting over food. I need a DC... Oh, I'm not going to tell you the DC. I need a dexterity acrobatics check. <laughs> Valis, Just you... Jump over the entire pack. Um, Some people will tell you you can't just jump over all your problems, but those people are wrong. Just need you just need more jump. Ah, I see the Mario method. All right, Allison, overzealous guard mistakes you for somebody else. Uh, you know that if you move more than twenty feet on this turn, the guard is going to make an opportunity attack against you. Oh, uh, bastard. Um. You've got a pretty good AC. What are the odds? Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. If I don't got time for this, it just keeps moving. Let's see. For Droki, a cloud, a, cl a crowd blocks his way. He needs to make a athletics or dexterity check to make his way through the crowd. All right. So Giselle, I need that. Uh, what was it? Dexterity. Acrobatics check. Yes. Oh, acrobatics. Okay. Oh, sweet. Got a good roll. All right. You get through them unimpeded. Sweet. I will continue in my pursuit. Okay. So, is Valis going to dash, and or is Valis going to move more than 20 feet? Yeah, Valis is going to dash. It's like, I don't got time for this. Ain't nobody got time for this. Ain't nobody got time for this. All right, this is your last free dash, so you don't need to start making constitution checks yet. What about Giselle? Um, yeah. I will dash. All right, I am going to need a constitution check from you. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, no, I'm, that's not good. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a constitution check or constitution saving throw? It oh, I is... have proficiency in constitution saving throws. Yeah, this fair. is a check. Oh, okay. I thought you said saving throw earlier. All right, so you get a level of exhaustion. Now, I'm going with the new rules for exhaustion. It's just a minus one to all of your checks and a minus five feet to your movement. All right. Per, per exhaustion level. But if you still hit well, six, well. you die. Shut up a little too hard jumping over those dogs. How long does it take to get rid of these things? Uh, a long rest heals one. Or removes one. Yeesh. Well. And the DC is 10. All right. All oh, right, that's not so... too bad. I now have minus one to that check, so. Droki is going to maintain 60 feet. At what point do you just start shooting for the kneecaps? And let me make the opportunity attack. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Uh, it's probably going to whiff. 13. Oh, yeah. D Valis just limbos underneath that. Just, whoa. Yeah, guard shouts out, uh, orders you to stop, calls you by a name that is not yours, takes a stab at you, but you quickly outdistance him. Uh, I need another d20 check from everybody. Oh. <laughs> Just getting worse. 
Oh, I got an 18. All right. Yeah. Gis- Giselle, you have no complications. Valis, you are running into the crowd that he had to get through last time. <laughs> oh, man. I need uh, athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. Uh, funny enough, I, while I am proficient in athletics, I'm better at acrobatics, so... Crocodile Dundee. Pretend you're Crocodile Dundee. Walk on their shoulders. Oh, good. He's rolling like crap, too. Um... All right, on the 10, you manage to get through them unimpeded. Oh, shit. Okay, he needs... Oh, wow. All right, so he is getting to a corner. It looks like he's going to duck into a building, but at this point in time, from uh, one building over there to Duragar, come marching out into his way, carrying a stained glass window that Droki somehow miraculously barrels through and shatters. Yeah, now we're going to fight over the fight with the guards to see who gets him. Oh, shoot. Well, it's okay. I just gained a level. I'm ready to, uh, ready to do this. <sighs> okay. Now, here I need for him... Okay. Uh, are you guys dashing again? Uh, sure, I can. All right, give me a con check. Oh my god. Okay. You gain a level of exhaustion also. Oh, do I need have uh, not been with us today. No, they have not. No, they have. Oh, we do have inspirations you can use. I already used one. Oh, I still have one. I don't know how to get rid of this. Uh, you gotta click the area. Okay, you got it. Wait. Oh, I have to do it before I know. No, you can. Inspiration you can use after. Yeah, we use the re Oh, you can? Wait, are you okay with me re-rolling that check for my exhaustion then? Because I would very much prefer to do that. I know that's sort of late. Uh, no, you can do that if you want to try to reroll okay. that. I do. So, so remake that con die. check. Okay, put that out there. And then it's constitution. No! That doesn't change it. Well, I don't think I can dash again. Okay. So he goes there... Uh, you dash. Um, what the fuck? At this point, I need a perception check from Valis. Okay. And it's just minus one to all this? Yeah. Alright, so... Uh, 26 then. Okay. Uh, You see, he gets to a wall. One of the walls that separates the Dark Lake District from the... What is it? Ladigers Furrow area. And he's not there. And at first, you're... It's like, where the hell did he go? Because there's nowhere to go here. And then you see a small... um, almost like a very cunningly hidden doggy door. It's a small flap for small creatures. Medium creatures have to squeeze through it to get through it. So it's like the size of an air conditioner vent? Yeah, sure. I do love the image that Bellis and Giselle are both showing up there just wheezing like smokers that have just for Anne for the first time in years. Yeah, he went through the door. That door, right there. Oh, I gotta run more. So embarrassed. I'm a fighter and I can't outrun a dwarf. What is this? I think it, they're, they're closer to the ground. It's easier for them to maintain speed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's mm, definitely that's not we're the other thing. To console ourselves. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Do we follow? Do we wait for the others? Uh, oh, know? we have those sending stones, or should we just wait for them? I mean, we just ran like five thousand feet in two rounds, or something. So. <laughs> Do you think they're following or waiting for us now to call back and say, "Hey, we got them." <laughs> I mean, we're probably following, just, you know, not full-out sprint, because... Uh... Because crowds and stained glass windows. <laughs> because all the numerous things that can and just did go wrong, if you hurry. Uh, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, we can go through there and then call them on the other side to let them know. It's your call. I'm going to just catch my breath over here for a minute and maybe puke a little bit. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up uh, whenever we catch up there. Uh, yep. Yeah, if you guys stop to rest and catch your breath, uh, the rest of the party will eventually catch up. What happened? Where'd he go? Yeah. Tiny door, right there. Ah. You couldn't you can brain tap him before then? There's so many people, man. Where yeah. he points, there's nothing but wall there, but Valus can, you know, then poke yeah, at it and over. manipulate it. And... Yeah, he goes over just basically uses boom, right there. See? Door. Okay, then the next question is, did he get a good look at you? I don't think so. There's so much crap going on. He never really, like, full-on bolted from us. Okay, so... There is a guard that thinks... That did take a swipe at me. That, that was a dick move. So he can't, like, describe you to his friends to be on the lookout for you. So you can follow into the that area. Yeah. Probably, Probably. not. Also, I do have... I can disguise myself. <laughs> I know, definitely didn't get a good look at Giselle. Where did you disappear to? I had to go on the rooftops, hoping to follow him. Uh, yeah, the roofs aren't all connected down here. Why are you so out of breath? I don't chase. I, I shoot arrows all the day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's... Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see do the thing you then, right? do after you're running when you like suck in air, but you try not to let like any outward signs. You know, <laughs> he's got hard. that teenager in high school hands behind the neck, just <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I get back to the surface, no more smoking. Got it. <sighs> so, assuming you can break line of sight, because if you can't break line of sight your chances fail. But assuming you can, the quarry has chances to make a stealth check to break line of sight. If they have mm -hmm. many things to hide behind, they get advantage. If it's in a very crowded or noisy area, they get advantage. If there's few things, they have disadvantage. If it's uncrowded, they have disadvantage. If the lead pursuer is a ranger, they have disadvantage. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's just Specifically that. Okay, yeah. okay. Or has proficiency in survival. So if anybody has proficiency in survival, they can follow people better. I love the fact that I do not have that proficiency hey, in survival, but just being a ranger. I thought I might actually have that. You're a ranger without survival proficiency. Criminal. I mean, that is his background. Urban <laughs> rangers. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the idea that he's he's done criminal crap in... That's why he's down here at the moment. <laughs> Who needs to survive in a city when you can stop at McDonald's? True, true. Listen, uh -huh. you take someone out, you take their wallet. Hey, I'm good for the next few days. Survival. <laughs> now, you might have a good assumption of where he's going. It might be possible to pick up traces of his travel on the other side. I thought he got stopped by guards, or is that not something that happened? Uh, no. I think someone okay, might have just... been going to stop him, but he, he ran away very quickly. So. Yeah, okay, and there's so we a lost him again. That's what you're 
ton of broken glass over here too. Okay. Mm. Alright, I have a kitten on my desk that is both very cute and very disruptive. So what is your right. group plan here? I mean, we just gotta head in head in and follow him, right? Are there any other exits we'd need to try to cover while while we're going in? Um, there are several mm. gates that you can get through. You guys do have passes. They may give you trouble when you flash those badges to get through, but you do have badges that you can get through. Or you guys can squeeze through this little hole. I have the Detect Thought spell. If you guys want me to do like a little like sensing of the Force to see if he's even in there or whatever. Yeah, that sounds good sure. before we squeeze ourselves through. Comically small hole. Yes, yeah, so I'll just grab some, uh, cast myself a little detect thoughts. Uh, I will save you that because you have to be able to see the target. Oh, see, I was reading it, it was like, you know, uh, the fuck's the word? Range area with self, so I wasn't sure if I could. Yeah. Wait a minute. Any creature that you can see within 30 feet. Not so much for that idea. It occurs to me, I do have this scroll of locate object, and he has a very distinctive and memorable hat. <laughs> I mean, that's seems like what it's there for. Yeah, sure. All right, I'll go ahead and pull out that scroll of locate object, and I would like to locate any uh, tentacle hats within a thousand feet, please. All right. Hmm, has Obzam been within 30 feet of it? Ooh. Ah, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I will say sure. Uh, you sense the direction of its location. So from here, its location is southwest of you. It is in motion, and it is heading southwest. All right, well, I guess we better hurry, and I'll right. squeeze through the crack, and then follow in that location, and this time we know he can't hide from us, unless he takes off his hat. I don't think he's going to do that. Yeah, he has enough of a lead on you, though, that you can't really close the distance. However, you do get a sense... Uh, that he is like going in this direction and at some point in time the direction seems to start twisting back and forth and uh, you lose sight let's see 10 minutes hmm. no you probably still have it uh, when you get to the edge the direction is uh, further west. Uh, when we get to the, the edge, where, sir? Oh, sorry, I was on the wrong layer. I was going to say, say, you may be on the wrong layer. Of the point. Were no, my no. directions okay. showing up? Nope. I saw now. Yeah, so, so he's, okay. when you get, he is, the direction is further west. Okay, so he, let's skip doesn't, town. This doesn't show you where he went down, right? Just show us where he is right now. Right, where he is now. But at, at some point in time, his direction began to uh, backtrack a little bit. And you can see right. at the edge, the there's a little path that 
goes. And then further uh, in, like, towards the center, there are wider paths to where it looks like people with carts or wagons can go from up top to down below as well. Okay. Okay. So this is, how deep is this uh, chasm here? I had a distance. And is this, this gate over here, is that... I can describe it in a moment. What I'm wondering is, can we use Featherfall and just, like, jump out of the city from here, where we are at the top? Because that could gain us a lot of ground. Um, it is... It is. Uh, that echo is bugging me. Um, it is roughly 200 feet deep and 500 feet wide. In some places, anyway. Some places it's a little narrower, but yeah. Okay, and this this gate. Is this gate... How tall is that gate relative to this chasm? Uh, it stretches to the ceiling. Of the, the cavern, okay. right? This is where this meets ceiling because it's basically a rock wall. The wall here meets ceiling. The gate itself does not stretch all the way to the ceiling, but the wall above it does. Okay. Uh, so, and if we're exiting through here, that would mean flashing our badges, probably, right? Or would they, would they... not care if someone's just leaving through the gate? Exiting through where? Going through the gate. Uh, gate you gate. do not see anybody near the gate. There's a guardhouse, but you don't see any activity. Okay, so maybe we can just maybe we can just leave. He just left. Yeah, All right. I can't with that. Except the selfie. Uh, so, Xandor, what do you think? Featherfall, jump down there, try to gain some ground that way. I uh, yeah. I think do that so. thing you like look over towards the edge look how far down it is like we give it a shot all right everyone jump what? off that cliff on three <laughs> if your party members jumped off a cliff would you <laughs> when there is a path that can take you you know a few more minutes to get down there safely a few minutes yeah minute. how much ground this guy can cover in a few minutes I think it was too late catching up with him. Yeah, he had a few minutes head start just from path. you catching up with everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I guess we should have been pursuing that too, but... I think oh, the pursuit might, might... idea is kind of crafty at this point. I think it's a matter of back to stealth. So, what? We try to ambush him when he comes, whenever he comes back? No, let's just... Yeah. Let's just, and there's just two down there. We'll, we'll gain a lot of ground on him. And then, uh, either call us to you or you can somehow get him out of there. I mean, he's he's leaving, right? Like he went further west here. Yeah, and then the duration ends. So he's somewhere outside the city right now. Uh, so unless we have someone who can track real well, and I'm not sure we do. I don't think that exit leads like out into the wild. I think it leads into uh, another dense set of caverns and stuff that have been uh, dug out by the Daros who live and work in them. Is that correct? Or is this lead? Uh, that seems to match what you've heard. Okay, so that's just the degree. Greater Harrow Settlement. Right, okay. Well, uh, that was... Not much use then. Maybe we try stealth, try to catch him in an ambush somewhere where he, he doesn't have as much of a head start. Or we could always like wait nearby here, and when he comes up out of the chasm again next time, we can have one of the stealth guys keep watch and then ambush him. Otherwise, we send them in to to go find him. I mean, he, he comes he comes into the Dar the Drugar area frequently, right? So he's got to be nearby, which means he's probably got to live 
within a couple hundred yards of, of, of the, the west edge of this area. So I, I you know, I, he probably will be coming back within like, you know, another 10, 12 hours or earlier. So we just keep a watch on here, and then next time he comes through the gate, we uh, jump on him? Or, like I said, our two self guys can go after him. Does anyone have a preference between these two plans? No. No. You guys don't want to do your selfie thing? Uh, sure, why not? It's better to be proactive than, you know, just a bystander. All right. Well, this time I'm going to go ahead and do what we should have done earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out a couple scrolls of Long Strider and cast one of those on each of you guys. <laughs> that would help a lot, I think. Yeah, but, I mean, we didn't have time right when we, we caught, when we spotted him initially. We were just running. And when they enter, we can probably begin working our way down one of the, the ramps to get down at the base, at least at the gate, to wait. Increases by 10 feet until it ends. Okay. Just a little bit faster. So you should both have 35 feet now. Yeah. <laughs> They're very tired, but somehow faster. Had a All right. Red so, Giselle and Valis, are you taking the switchbacks to get down as well? Um, do I still have the jump spell on me? What's the uh, no, that only, only lasts a minute. That's gone. Yeah. And yes. I mean, do we not want to do the featherfall plan? Oh, I, I can mean, do that too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, we can just yeah, you guys jump off featherfall, and then uh, that'll get you a little bit closer behind him. You, you trust these guys, right? Is that that's what I'm hearing? So, when does Xandor ever let you down? I don't know. Oh. I've only met you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like two days. Well, they didn't kill me when I when we first met, and since then we've always gotten along fairly well. All right, so they're not just trying to toss both of us off a cliff. We did but... dangle you in front of a legendary red dragon. Really? I mean, we were all there. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, there we was no the dangling. We got to be the edgy one staying in the back. It's the dwarves that are over close. That <laughs> was pretty safe, but the... yeah, further back, I mean, if they left the nice meals up front, we could dash out. But yeah, all right. All right. Is that ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Count us down, Mr. Featherfall. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right. <laughs> Xandor just shoves them both off. <laughs> wow. As we're right. just falling down. You know, we really got to discuss what cut we're getting because it feels like we're doing a lot more of the work right now. No, I was just thinking the same thing. Uh, as we're in free fall, it's just like, what uh, cut of what that you're worried about? <laughs> of the money. Uh, well, you get paid in magic items around here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> but just like as we're falling, it's like, yeah, I wonder what that cut should be. You know, still having not cast Feather Fall yet. Just kind of like, hmm. Ground. Sure is coming up pretty close. Fit. I have this weird little clay token with a feather. <laughs> that for me, at least. Ah, okay. Backup plan. I wouldn't call it a thread. Just, you know, making sure everybody knows that we're all contributing in our own unique and special ways. <laughs> I mean, I have a high hit point total, so I can always just do that. <laughs> I have a higher hit point total than... Ah, uh, yes. Cleric's Featherfall. Just drink a healing potion after you land. I mean, it works for Einzen, so... 
Uh, but yeah, as as we rocket towards the ground, I will, you know, maybe two thirds of the way down, cast feather fall on us. So there are vents in carved into the wall where gases seep out of. Uh, you do see the occasional hole in the side of the chasm. Uh, you hear noise, people living inside some of them. Uh, nobody really comes out to investigate yet. You guys are just going down, getting to the bottom. Uh, and then this guardhouse and gate seems to be abandoned. You can enter on this side. Uh, it looks like it originally was built so that it could monitor the other side of this wall. The gate itself is cracked open a bit, right? It is not closed or locked, so you can get through the gate. There is inside the guard houses, if you check the, re the evidence that some people have camped out here or slept here recently in the past, uh, nothing of any value or of use remains. Okay, I guess we'll wait here for you. Or until we get the sending. Yeah, if you, if you have to send us a message, make sure you tell us about how far and everything we need to run. It'll either be very detailed or very, oh god, oh god, please help us. So, on the other side of the gate, uh, you easily travel about a quarter of a mile before you start getting into a very densely packed, carved out of the rock city for the most part. Uh, it's almost like a Warren's. There's looks like burrows carved into the walls, simple structures piled on top of one another. The streets are dirty and cluttered with refuse and um, debris, tons of spread, uh, just waste everywhere too. People are living here and uh, how stealthy are you being? Uh, hopefully decently stealthy. So All right. 18. As you pass through the gates, uh, the stench in the air changes from acrid and metallic to fetid and repugnant. The fires of industry replaced by squalor. The homes in this part of Grackelstuf are crudely carved from the rock or are just holes in the walls, arranged in no apparent order. The chatter in the air is unnerving, with hundreds of Darrow muttering, screaming at each other, and otherwise reveling in their insanity. Those who spot you Look at you with a burning hatred. Seems like a fun place. Probably a lot of good restaurants down there. Yep. And I need a stealth check also from Giselle. Let's see how this goes. Wait, hold on. I can I could activate my cloud rune. I can get advantage on wait, no, is that the word? Oh, that's not the right one. I could get advantage on stealth. But... Anyways. All right, you are good. Um, while you may not necessarily be hiding, you are doing your best to avoid detection, um, blending in with the debris and rocks and other stuff so that you're not drawing the attention to you. And most of the Darrow you pass seem too busy um, just either arguing or talking to themselves or anything to really notice you. Uh, 
Um, now I need a perception check. Okay. Uh, you do find traces of Droki's passing. Hmm. Whether it is a few footsteps that are recently stepped in something that leaves a trace, or you overhear some Darrow madly talking about him as he passed, you do manage to find evidence of his passing. And uh, about an hour later, your long strider ends, and you see uh, between a cluster of hovels is a narrow fissure in the chasm wall with kind of scraps of cloth and gray sheets of canvas and moldy boxes, very obviously trying to hide it. It is uh, big enough for a small creature to pass through. Medium creatures have to squeeze through it. Yeah, I'm getting real sick of this tiny guy. You know? <laughs> Just... Uh... And as you're sitting there, um, a very faint glowing purple mist seeps out of the fissure not constantly just a like a waft of it do we have any idea what that might be besides ominous no because you didn't stop to talk to the mind flare like we could trust anything it had to say All right, so we gotta we gotta figure out: do we wait here and see if he comes out or anything? Do we go in or do we call them? I mean, we might as well just go in, else we're gonna be jumping off cliffs for the rest of the day. Uh, right, right. They seem to have a little too much fun with that, didn't they? <laughs> all right, all right. Ladies first. So now is. <laughs> Everybody going? Or are the dwarves still hanging back? I mean, given as it's for small people, we should let the dwarves go first, because they'll be at the least disadvantage coming through. Did you even call us to join you? Call us or come back and let us know. Yeah. Eh, I'd probably say tell Giselle, yeah, give them a call, keep an eye out on it. So activate, activating the Sending Stone, you get 25 words. Try to give directions in 25 words or less. That is G Giselle's department. <laughs> Valis is just watching the... 25 words or less? Okay. Can do that. <laughs> The dwarves are going first, right? Oh, you gotta gonna... call them. I mean, you gotta call them. That's the same. Yep. You gotta call them. Uh, let, let, let us know that you know you want us to go over there and. Yeah, Valis is keeping an eye on the door first. thing and letting you call them. And I'm keeping track of the words. Uh, where are the dwarves exactly in relation to us? We're, like, how far we're away? We're way back outside this this we're whole up, area. Yeah, we're pretty much a straight shot in, so. Yeah, they're probably about a mile back. The uh, boy, the chasm from the gate was about a quarter mile before the city began, and then you were tracking through the city for a bit. So if 
I just tell them to go like roughly straight through. What are the odds they fail? <laughs> Probably very good. Damn. Um. I mean, did you want to meet them at the beginning part of the city and bring them here? Yeah, I mean, you 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 is could. There just, a reason we have to use a sending spell, or is, is it no, we're no, just trying really to use this guy? Okay, then let me just not waste the sending spell, and I'll go back and get them while he holds it. All right. Okay. Yep. Fellas will just chillax here watching this ever puffing hole. Um, I need then a stealth roll from Giselle. Where is stealth? Oh, I rolled well. Okay. You managed to get back to the group without drawing any untoward attention from you, from the uh, Darrow around. Uh, then comes the other group. For whom stealth isn't really an option. I think we're going to have to make some other checks than stealth. Intimidation. That's what I was about to say. All right. So yeah, I assume uh, you know, come out the gate, wave at us, and then uh, come on down to uh, see what's up. Okay. Pretty much. And we begin walking back. All right. Now I need the three of you to give me a stealth rolls. Not going to happen. Let's see. Do we have any other options here? Is this just... Check out uh, there. Oh, uh, you're the good one. We have a better option. I could just stealth along and you guys could try to come up with a cover story since I'm sort of drow. Maybe that makes it easier. I'm not going to cover story either. I'm just going to walk right through the dark. The dark. Uh, if anyone tries to stop us, if you say, hey, no, I'm bigger than you. Or I could just roll a 19. I'm the stealthiest dwarf alive. That's with disadvantage. That's fucked up. Hey. It's not okay. That is good. I'll just give you what I would be normally. <laughs> Ow. It's so hilarious understand. that you got a nat 20. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's, yeah, I got a natural 20 and an 18, <laughs> and then I kept the 18. Okay, and that's... then from the other pair, I got one from Xandor, I need one from Valis. Oh, I'm, I need to make one, even though I'm staying? Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh. All right, yeah, I got All right. Minus one. the group checks pass on both sides. So the occasional Darrow notice you, and they look at you with hatred and mutter at you and stuff, but they don't actually seem to do anything. Uh, okay. The ones that look like they may have done something never even noticed your passing. And uh, about from the time Giselle left to the when you come back, about an hour has passed. Okay. No. Because it took an hour before the long strider wore off. So two hours total. Uh, dishes just don't seem to add up much here, but that's okay. I don't care. So we face a sort of like a, a, a small opening for a small creature that's puffing out purple miasma. No miasma at the moment. But yeah, the rest okay. is correct. Yeah, so you think he's there. in there? That's what all, all the uh, hints point to. What was the last hint? Uh, just some conversations about him moving it, uh, moving around and putting him in that spot because the other ones you can see do not contain him. Okay. 
right. So we go in. Ready my Warhammer, have it handy, and walk in. All right. Nobody in this group is small, right? No. Um, unfortunately no. not. So yeah, there's a bunch of squeezing involved. Uh, it looks very tight and very dark. However... Where did it go? Oh, I should have asked if either of you needed a light source. I'm good. The uh, the squeezing is only about 10 feet before it opens up and you guys can move freely. And you are in a somewhat natural looking tunnel that seems to, it's about five feet wide and it has a gentle downward slope. And every once in a while, there is this eerie purplish fog that kind of spontaneously just seems to manifest and waft a little bit before dissipating. Okay, anything within 60 feet? No, nope, the tunnel kind of curves a little bit and stretches out. So okay, you don't go have 60 feet of uninterrupted line of sight. Uh, however, even out of traps, after about 50 feet. It opens up into a much wider area. Bottom right. Sorry, bottom left. Bottom right left, now. yes. And you have to zoom in really deep. But there is a party token. Oh, this is a big map. It is a very big map. Uh, anybody got a preference for left or right hand? Um, you do see up to this point uh, a bit more of evidence that somebody has recently traveled this way. Holy, this is huge. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're level five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be fine. You, you are level straight five. ahead. You just fully nice. explore. Going straight ahead would be the best thing. Cause... Yeah, keep the left hand wall in sight. So one of you, or you guys can take turns, use moving the party token. Um, go, you know, five of the big squares at a time. That. Yeah, like that. So that's, you know, five feet at a time. Um, it is very uh, wide. It is somewhat well, not well lit, um, dimly lit. So in your dark vision range, you almost see as if it were bright light. Um, nothing seems to happen by this time. Uh, you do see... 
Uh, no, go ahead and move another section first. So up ahead is a fork in the road, and it looks as though there was evidence that somebody uh, has recently gone up the left side. Do we see anything moving there? You see. Uh, oh, let me give you from back here, too. So, in this area, uh, the glow of phase wrist casts an eerie soft light across the cavern, swirling into spiral patterns and casting dancing shadows from jagged pillars lining the walls. The air smells and tastes slightly metallic and the sound around you is strangely muted. The dripping of water makes no echo as if you stood in open air. Uh, in this area, uh, as you get to about here, uh, you see Droki. He stands before a tall yet narrow crack in the wall, which he is staring at for a moment. And then uh, he seems to lean down, rubbish among the fungi. Fung yeah, fungi? Fungi. And while you still are like 100, what are these? 25, 50, so 50 to 75 feet away. He cackles and he plucks a mushroom and eats it whole. Oh boy. And then he disappears in sight. Disappears from sight. Like invisibly disappears from sight or like just keeps moving? Uh, give me an arcana roll, Mr. Sorcerer. Mm, yes, clearly my specialty. Can I? Can I? Now help help him out with this, or uh, make the roll instead of him. You may make the roll in addition to him. Okay, so this is my specialty. Xandor, yes, he turned invisible. Um, Obzam, you catch the faint glimpses and signs of a like a shrink effect. Shrinking. Shrinking. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Time for magic school bus shenanigans. Nothing uh, can go wrong with this. No, he just made himself way. very small. I. That's um, that's an odd one. I haven't seen that one before. All right. Uh, so I'm assuming we can't follow him unless, uh, of course, unless we were much smaller. Is that correct? You can squeeze through here, but it will obviously take a lot longer than if you were smaller. Any mushrooms <laughs> like the one he just ate it's still there? There are a lot of mushrooms of different type here. One that would be of similar coloration and size? Uh, um, a lot of different mushrooms seem to be similar color and size. Can Valis try to make a survival check to see if he can identify one that was like that? You may. That would be great, but... Oh, hey, 19. Sweet. Uh, yes, you see um, of here, besides the random mushrooms that you probably have no effect, there are two distinct types of mushrooms that you have heard about. One of them makes you big, one of them makes you small. All right, all right. How how much into fairy tales were you guys? Anyways, uh, <laughs> okay. I've heard about these. Some people talked about this before, but uh, these right here make you tiny. These make you reach story to size or make you bigger. So I'm assuming take one, 
Take both, eat one now. Yeah, take one of each and eat the science. Not fall on. Yep. And this time, by the way, when you get in range of him, mind freeze him, whatever you do. Oh, I was or all say, full you, person. You, you still got that speak with dead thing because I can just end this now. We might need him to lead us some. Fine. Yeah, I can. I gotta trick up my sleeve. Because if you don't, I'll just hold person. Yeah. I could try mine, then yours. You could try yours, then afterwards. Uh, but yeah, here, each of you. This is a small one. This is the big one. Yeah, well, fair enough. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Sam will go ahead and take a big bite, trusting his dwarven constitution to see him through the horrible poison. I will trust his horrible poison and dwarven constitution before I try any. <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah, I was just kind of waiting way to see if he was correct about this. <laughs> As you eat the mushrooms, you get the sense that you can uh, fight the effects. So you can choose to make a saving throw or not. I will choose not to make a saving throw. Obzam, you shrink. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, when you do shrink, you are well below the level of the mushroom, so you are now in a forest of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I will, I will pull out Dawnbringer and wave around my tiny little match-sized lightsaber to uh, let everyone else know that it's it worked and it was safe. I didn't wait. I, I eat one too. <laughs> of course not. All right. So does anybody not eat one? After seeing the meat, Ballas will eat his. Yep. All right. I will consume. So your size is halved in all dimensions, and your weight is one eighth of normal. And everybody shrinks to small category. And. Uh, I think. Wait, small category? Yeah, you go, you, you go from medium to small, small to tiny. Do we have to eat twice in order to get down to his size? You can't. Only one yeah, at a time. Yeah, uh, he was and, already small. Yeah, so he, yeah he was small. He got went to tiny. You go to small. And at small, you need to squeeze through these. So yeah, I guess you couldn't have got through medium at all. So he has okay. the speed advantage because your speed is halved through this. Eat twice. So I can follow him. All right, shoot him through the kneecaps. Got it. Eating another one has no effect. Doesn't get you down to tiny? No. You can only be affected by the effect one time. Eating another one has no effect. I'm assuming it's the uh, reduce and large spell. Which so how yeah. does he get down to tiny? Because he's he small now. Oh, because he's small already. Okay. Yes. I didn't understand that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. He is not a Duragar. He is a Darrow. Okay. Squeezy, squeezy. So I will squeeze you through. Uh, coming out the other side, there is another patch of mushrooms growing here. Uh, a moment later, you are in the clearing. To the right, so back behind you, is a large pool of water. Uh, which you went over like a natural bridge at some point. You heard it traveling underneath you, but you didn't actually have to cross the water. Okay, but it looks like we could be full size in this area now. Yes, you could be. Could be. Okay, eat the big mushroom. Uh, you grow back to full size. Yep, same. Just not dealing with this. 
I'll remain small a little longer just in case it, uh, it's an issue. I'm going to keep everybody's tokens over there by the entrance <laughs> until needed. Fair enough. All right, you guys can move another five sections. It branches off. Uh, you can see that to the left, it seems to fork a few more times. To the right, it runs into a rather large. Fungi thicket. Mm. Hmm. Any uh, tracks to be followed here? Uh, give me another perception check, Mr. Tracker. Or survival. Uh, no, it's going to be perception. I have advantage on those. Three. Yeah, he seems to have gone down the right fork. I hate this man so much. I'm going to steal his hat. Uh, that's I'm going to take his hat when we're done with this. Uh, yeah, he went down this way, guys. Uh, well, we follow. Deep into the mushroom grove. Yep. And here uh, it is densely packed. A dense fungi forest blocks your way. The, its tallest specimens growing some five feet high. Even as you assess the best way to pass through it, a hissing sound starts to rise, like uncounted tiny voices whispering in tongues you don't understand. Oh boy, it's time to be afflicted with more madness. And okay. soon, soon they will start to sing Procol Harem. Uh, I'd like to do a survival check to see to know what the hell's going on here. Does that um, make sense? Or unless you guys know what's already going on here? I I suspect a couple things. I can try one thing, um, but we'd have to pass through quickly. So are you willing to shove your way through? Does, does it look like we can like move at full speed through? No, if you are full size, you're going to be difficult terrain. What about small? At best. Uh, if you are small... Let's see here. Tiny creatures, no penalty. Small and medium creatures, it is difficult terrain. Okay, so it doesn't matter for small. Okay. Well... It's either poison or noise. Which one you want to risk? Is there any chance I know if these are poisonous or just eh, whatever? Um, fourteen survival. You recognize a bunch of different fungus funguses here. There are um, some edibles, some that are exotic. You recognize a few that, uh, in fact, even emit light if interacted with the correct way. Let's see here. Uh, you even see a few scattered around that have a chance to explode but none yeah. really seem poisonous so this doesn't seem poison some of them will burn in a very different way can you, can you point out the dangerous ones i'm just gonna channel wave yeah pretty much the majority of them uh you want you can go first 
so you can like scout the path. Now, if you take some effort ahead of time, you might be able to use some of the exploding ones to maybe burn a path, but that will take time too. I, I do propose that idea. Is like I can we can set off the explosive ones and helps us with a pathway, but he may gain a little bit of ground at this point. But I don't know where the hell he's going in here either. So. Can you scout a path avoiding the explosive ones? I can try. It's not my forte. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tell me when you're ready. All right. Step where I step. Wait. All right. You ready? Yeah. I cast silence. Can I focus it on an object? I wasn't able to tell from the spell. I know past versions let you, but I don't know about current. Um, point. Is that a range? Yeah, centered on a point. Oh, okay, and that won't cover even a part of the path, will it? it yeah, it's or a 20-foot sphere, so... 40 feet at most, which is less than one of these full squares. Yeah, so if one of them was verbal, then... Sorry, if one of them was a... Like, it was like an area that had creaking sorry. mushrooms, I could target that, that area, but not outside of it, probably. Yeah, you can cover oh, from well. e edge to edge of the passage, because that's within 40 feet, and then a yeah. bubble, like, you know... Not gonna be enough. It was a smart idea, but it ain't gonna cut it. Okay, we just have to follow. All right. All right. So uh, you guys. Exception or survival to pass through here. You're fine. Oh, sweet. You can start forcing your way through. Um, now you think that uh, anybody using any fire spells might be problematic. Uh, at this point, Phallus will put up the bow and pull out his uh, quarter staff from the quiver to just be kind of like making a little pathway so he doesn't have to touch anything himself. All right. All right. When you get to here, uh, everybody. Oh, no. can roll initiative, but you are surprised, so no action the first turn. Let me... I can't select my token, so I'll just roll it. Yeah. Uh, the tokens are back by the entrance. So you can go find my token back at the start. I'll bring them up front. Sorry, sorry. Xandor with his cat like reflexes on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Uh, I got caught in the sun, so clearly <laughs> it's not my fault. Listen, it's nap o'clock, so it's time to. Yeah. You know, I did nap pretty good today. It was awesome. I hurt my neck napping, so I'm trying to fix that quick. Yay, being an old man. Woo. I'm going to move the party token out of the way. We there. Who is not? Oh. 
Oh, no. He did something, I can't see it. Giselle oh, and a 17. Rakuk got a 4. Yeah, roll 20 is not responding. And... I rolled a 4 enough to go to sell. Do whatever. And my voice connected says it's connected, but I'm not hearing anybody. Uh, no, I'm just I'm talking. Oh, there you are. Okay. Woo. Really quick. Everybody all at once. But yeah, roll 20 is not responsible. Still unloading. All right, before anybody acts this turn. And now rule 20 wants me to log in again. Yeah, it is being slow. Uh, Obzam, you are attacked. Oh boy, I love being attacked. Uh, 16. Misses, maybe? That's uh, a miss. And Xandor. Uh, nine. Let's see where is Obzam over. Okay, it lowered. As uh, basically through the thicket, the fungi thicket, there are swarms of centipedes. Ah, lovely. And why did it? What the hell? Ask not why the little pony does whatever the hell it's doing today. It will not have any answers for you. <laughs> Maybe I put it on the wrong layer? I did. It doesn't help if tokens are on the map layer. 
All right. Uh, this one here is going after Obzam again. Uh, now that you're aware of it, it doesn't have advantage, so six Hi. misses. Uh, Valis, you are up. Um, All right. Um, so Valis, this turn. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yep. you're test, barely test. Coming. All right. Uh, hello. Yes, I can do test. Uh, Valis will move a bit back. To get some distance, because, you know, he needs to. We'll just drop the quarterstaff, pull out his bow, and aim at, I guess, this one. All right. And since an ally is right next to it... Uh, First of the campaign. You no, know, why not? I have never used that. Let's go. Uh, a twelve is going to miss. Yeah. Yep. A lot of exhaustion of us. That would have been so much damage. Look at it. That would have been 27. I, oh, Jesus Christ. That have killed me. All right, that, that's the end of the last of turn. Uh, Giselle, you are up. Ooh, I get point. to make attack rolls. Hmm. I'm going to try and hit Holds. the uh, figure in the back there with my bow. First attack roll. So I got an 18 and a 28. Uh, both of those will hit. Okay. And 14 and 13. And this was the one in the back by Obzam? I was trying to hit this thing. I don't know if he's. Oh, that's that's Malice. Oh, then uh, let's just go with this one. <laughs> yeah, we got to get I, a uh, blue I border I'm for Valis. on you guys yet. You were worried about you're worried about us going to to kill off to kill you off, and then it's your own partner, our own partner in crime. All right. The swarm is taking a beating, but it is still there. Oh, it's a swarm. Okay. Swarm. Uh... Giselle's turnover. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgot to click the button. I'm not used to that. Obzam, you're up. All right. Well, I will visit horrible violence upon this swarm of insects. With uh, bring out the Dawnbringer, start glowing like the sun, and that'll be a critical hit. Uh, yes, it will be. Uh, nice. 
for one for eighteen damage. Uh, Dawnbringer just kind of bug zaps all of the centipedes in that swarm. Perfect. And then, so if that swarm's gone, then I'm going to go ahead and run over to backup Xandor and make my second attack. Which is a natural one, of course. All things being perfectly balanced. As they should be. And are you done? Uh, yes. Alright, next swarm. Xandor again. Uh, nine. Doesn't seem to be able to stomach Gith Yankee flesh, so it's not really putting much effort into biting. I'm okay with this. Your terms are acceptable. Uh, Rakuk. And technically it is in your space. Technically. It's, uh, how far from me? I have to, like, zoom into, like, 300% in order to even it's see It's like them. 15 feet. So, too far, huh, for melee? Because uh, you said I'm at half move, right? Yes. So, 25 divided by 2 is 12, so, yeah. You can do 10 and uh, get into melee range. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Here, I'll move you. You got really muffled. I caught nothing. Ignore the javelin of lightning. There we go. Much better. Uh, oh, okay. That will hit. Five life, man. All right. Are you done? Oh, yeah. Xandor, you have pesky centipedes swarming all over your feet. Disgusting. Uh, I'm just going to attack them, because it doesn't... I don't know what's going on enough to want to spend spell slots on these things, so... I will just, Reasonable. Uh, give them Reasonable. I mean, the first swarm taken out without much trouble, so... 17. Uh, that's going to hit. Eight damage. And then that'll be my turn. You slice through some of the uh, centipedes there. The swarm is still going strong. Okay. I'll also just do a regular shot. Nothing fancy this time. For 11 damage on a 23 hit. 23. That will hit. That'll be it. I need to backtrack a moment.
All right, Giselle, you are up. Ooh, we got more company, huh? Um, yes, uh, spiders are emerging from the fungus thicket as well. Okay, the one right next to me, do I have disadvantage to hit this thing? Uh, no, well, with a bow, yes. Okay, has there any... I like disengage, or does that take an action? Unless you have a special thing, yes. Action and, uh, cutting action. There is a special thing called letting them hit you. Yeah. But, uh... Oh, wait, I could just move back just and take... take an opportunity attack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to move over here. Just go right there. And let him try to hit me. Hit, I guess. I wonder if I should switch to jump gate for next one because apparently they've cleaned it up more and it is supposed to help with the lag. Come on, spiders. Uh, crit. Oh, boy. Uh, as you leave their space, uh, they, Much they damage? bite onto you for 25 piercing. Hey, boy. Importantly, what saving throw do I have to make? Saving throw for what? Can you guys hear me? You've cut out. Now I can. Yeah. Oh, 25 piercing like for Giselle. Jesus Christ. Damn. Ow. As, as they crit. I... Okay. Well, uh, that's a lot of damage. Second wind, shoot him in the face? Yeah, let's do that. Or Lionel. Well, I am at 14 hit points. All right, I will shoot the spider back. And I'm assuming those both hit. <laughs> yes. If they don't, we're in a lot of trouble. And that's a total of 19 piercing to the spider. It's a single None. spider? All right. Yes. That's better. And I want to use a bonus action as well to... Where is it? Second wind. You may do so. It's 1d10. That's 12 hit points back. I'm back up to 26. That's a little better. I'll try one more crit. Yeah. Just barely. And that's my turn. I'll try to do it right this time. All right. Well, I'll try to finish off this swarm here. Uh, 15? 15 will hit. 9 da radiant damage.
still up? It is still up. All right, one more. And that'll be another 16 radiant damage. Uh, that is going to vaporize the swarm. Excellent, excellent. And with that dealt with, I'll go ahead and move over to engage the other spider before it eats Giselle. Wonderful. Standing in front of pe other people 101, first in the spider college. Exactly. And oh yes, the all right. The spider swarm is going to crawl up into Obzam space. Oh God, they're uh, leading me along. Oh, the humanity. Okay, that's fine. And then the one down here is going to crawl into Valis's space. Try to eat up. Yeah, I don't like being all alone over here. Valus, uh, 10 misses also. Recoup, you are up! Okay. Um. 15 foot cube. I can't do it. Just on reach, I think. No, wait, maybe I can. The cube AOEs are from the corner, right? It depends on the cube. 15 foot cube. Is it centered on you, or is it an area in space? Oh, area. So, the this swarm here is in Valis's space. Oh, Valis is included? Uh, I just can't stack them easily. I just can't stack them easily. Oh. And in that case, I'm going to have to kill the one that was close to me, then. Yeah, uh, it. unless Valus was the one that was was hurt badly, right? Nope. No. Oh, you're fine so far. I haven't been touched. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that then. Okay, I'll smack the one that's closest to them. So you could stay where you are because that one is in Obzam space, which is adjacent to you. I think it'd be gotta be a little bit closer to where I, where I was planning on moving. I think I need to be like that, right? You were originally next to him. You yeah, but I want to be a little. Bit, yeah, but I want to be a little close to the other one in case I need oh, to eventually. Oh, got it. And if this one goes down, I want to use the rest of my move to move even further. So yeah, you may try to smash the spiders swarming Obzam. He's taking his time to show up. Uh, Twelve. Twelve is going to hit. Oh, okay. Six bludgeoning. All right. It is still there. Yeah. It's still there? Okay, so I'll stay there then. Xandor, you are up. Uh, I should slide over here to this pile of bugs, these disgusting things, and uh, give them a little pokey poke. Make sure to sneak attack. Take them by surprise, where the giant swarm of sp like the giant undulating mass of spiders isn't expecting you to stab them. You know what? 
if they knew better, they would know that it, they should be stabbed. Uh, a seven damage. That, you take out a few of the spiders, the swarm is still there. Gross, 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 gross. <laughs> Uh, and then that's my turn. Uh, Valis, you are up. Valis will move out of that space to get the bugs off him and be in a different spot. Are you moving the full 10 feet there, though? Yes. All right. They're going to try to bite you as you leave. Yeah, I figured. I mean, I can't do much. Of uh, 16? That misses. Okay. Let me put them uh, in the actual space they're in now. All right. Screw it. Let's see if this can work this time. Nat 20. Hey. So 13, 23 damage to them. All right. <laughs> Headshot every spider at the same with the same arrow. You took out about half of the swarm. Oh, come the fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get any sneak attack because no. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Boop. Looks like it's Giselle's turn. Hmm. Well, you guys I... Giselle, I'm going to try and shoot the spider down. nearest to Obstam. Okay, it is in his space. They have cover for from ranged attacks. Hmm. You might want to help then... out that Valus, actually. Bye, yeah, please. I'll shoot that one. That's a better target. I'm by myself over here. Uh, so um, be... They're going to hit. Uh, 26 your thing damage. Uh, that is enough to take out the swarm. Oh, ah. very nice. Thank you. And I'll frankly wave Dawnbringer around myself and just have to remove spiders with it. Uh, yes. Alright, uh, 23, 23 damage. And since you are doing radiant damage, uh, your first attack is does enough. Ah, perfect. They don't resist radiant. They resist physical. Ah, wonderful. Uh, Lightsabers, the perfect tool for killing spiders. Anyway, I, that's what I happened in the house. It, <laughs> I find that it's the perfect tool for almost everything. <laughs> and then Just now... Like, you know, shave, shaving in the mirror in the morning with a lightsaber. Yeah. You are at this junction. You have no idea which way Droki went. Uh, how did he bypass the spiders? He was tiny. Yes, but they were smaller. Hundreds of them. Uh, we didn't follow a false trail, did we? You uh, call them my, my tracking skills subpar? Because they I may be. I don't track a lot. Sneaky son of a bitch. Actually, I don't track a lot, so I just, they could be subpar. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, if you want to call them subpar, then yeah, sure, I'll call them subpar. Yeah. I vote left. Uh, I vote that? right. Alright. Tool to the death to the side. Left. I was going to say, is there any chance I can be. I mean, I'm like a fighter. A I'm okay with this. Perception survival thing to see if I can find any trace of a trail. Nope. Nope. Uh, you look and look, and you have a feeling that he is tiny enough that he is passing through without disturbing anything. I vote right, would be yeah. whatever the way this way was, because I don't know what got what is left and right here. Uh, so we left right. Oh yeah, so is it our left or the characters left? Yeah. <laughs> All right, what that way? Good enough. Stage left, true left. Yeah, I'm voting that way. I know somebody voted the other way. Oh really? We could all be voting the same, depending on what version of left we've got in our heads as we're saying the votes. So everyone we came in from the bottom left. So we came from the top left. Came from the top left. We came in this way. Yeah. 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 
I uh, got mixed up there. All right. So everyone using the measure tool, point the direction you want to go. <laughs> sure. Perfect. I don't have to worry about finding the right button. Are you sure? Because it's all still lit and the party token is near the bottom left. I had to move, move tokens move over here. Yeah. Okay. It was moved out it's of the way. Still, like it was... lit up and stuff to the bottom left where we that's passed. Because... So, okay. That's I mean, if you, if you follow the path back, if you zoom out and follow the path back, and this is the way we came. Okay, I trust you guys. Yeah. All right. Head on down and try to escape the mushroom fields. Uh, Valus will put this stupid bow up and grab the uh, staff to start clearing again. Just again, step where I step. It curious me. I'm kind of using exploding mushroom against those swarms, maybe. But that probably would have been more trouble than it was worth. Yeah, I would rather not be that close to exploding things. I, I think chain reaction would be the term. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There. I fixed it so that the unexplored part is no longer lit up. flashing on mine. All right, so you're going this way. Um, nothing seems to jump out once you get out of the fungi thicket. Um, everybody can give me a perception check with disadvantage. Oh, boy. Oh, that's just I was already so good at those. Ah, ignore. ignore the advantage. Is just eleven for me. Oh, I got a natural crit too. Yeah. You got a fourteen. I think our best best of the party is fourteen. Yeah, it does look that way. Xandor, you hear the sound of pitter pattering feet up ahead, well beyond your guys' dark vision. Uh, I'll point out the pitter patter of little feet in that direction, and we surge forward in pursuit of our prey. Finally, maybe one can only hope. So yeah, you guys can start moving yourself up. Uh, I will five at a time. I'll tell you when to stop. Or actually stop the moment you see a fork. So here? Yep. Um, so you no longer hear the pitter-patter of feet, but from this direction, you hear a, a faint murmuring in the distance. Hard to identify, just a, a very low din of sound. Keep going, right? Or you mean like it's a fork, right? Left and right? Yep. Because I can't see the map right now. Roll 20 is froze up again. Uh, so. I, I think. Left? Yeah, you said you wanted to keep hugging the left wall, right? Yep. I yep. think we go that way. That's typically my default choice. Uh, we might be doubling back on ourselves here. Or we might be about to reach a hideout time. Or accidentally stumbled into the end game of this game. Uh, 
Is the uh Oh, let me move the party token for a moment. Seems like if you skip too much distance it doesn't reveal the areas. I've got the whole corner revealed, but Yeah, so do I. See this weird little plateau here. Okay. So here, the glow of Phaedra shifts across this chamber as if pushed by an unseen wind. It flows toward and around a large mesa and continues to spiral upward, but the ceiling of the cavern is too dark to end too high to see. You hear a murmur of whispers coming from atop of the mesa. That's comforting. Its stacked levels resemble steps in a staircase, but there is a ramp running from top to bottom, providing an easy way up. Oh. I think we should check it out. Yeah. The over under on <clears throat> finding what we're looking for up there. I mean, nothing, none of this weirdness seemed to dissuade him, dissuade him so far, so. At least take a look. The murmurs and whispers grow louder as you approach. You go up to the top. You know what? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll say we'll go up to the top. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is coming with me, but... Me eventually. Obzam, <laughs> you hear disparate sounds. You hear the rhythmic clank and roar of Gracklestu's forges. You hear a low rumble of Thembashad's displeasure. You hear mad screaming of Darrow. Uh, you even hear hints and snatches of conversations. Hmm. Well, that's unusual. Uh, so I can just I can just hear conversations as if I'm just like in the same room of a whole bunch of different things. Not quite that detailed. You might be able to focus on one or something, but right now everything is blending together. All right. I would like to try to calm down, close my eyes, focus on it, and see if I can pick out anything related to Jiroki or Red Dragon Egg. Those two, those two keywords let me pick up any thread of conversation. Okay. I need a wisdom saving throw. Um, okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. You succeed, so you only take half. <laughs> Start to that. Uh, you take four psychic damage. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, you did not fail at all, so... And you did not succeed by five or more. So you, you spend some time focusing and trying, and uh, you can almost sense that this is a supernatural effect of some sort, but you cannot focus down to Droki or Dragon Egg. All right. Uh, given that, I'll go ahead and... You might be able to try again. I might be able to try again, but I think uh, first I'll check if anyone else has any other ideas. I'll back off and uh, let everyone know. There's 
some kind of uh, phasers, warping of the phasers, causing some kind of phenomenon up there. You can hear hear a whole bunch of different things from all across the city. Different conversations. I, I heard them a shot. I heard the forges. And I, I was trying to trying to pick out a particular any particular information about uh, Loki or the Dragon Egg, but I couldn't couldn't concentrate. Hurt my brain trying to lis- listening to all that noise up there. Uh, Xandor, if you know anything about this, being your inclinations towards mental magic? Uh, <clears throat> Does the things that he's describing bring anything to mind? Not really, no. Uh, hmm. Nothing... Nothing strikes me as uh, something I would remember. Chances down here might be an illithid, might be madness from the the demon lord that was lurking about. Might just be some cultists trying to, I don't know, corrupt the dragon egg or something. Yeah, probably a part of the widespread corruption of the phasers, the various spatial warping we've been running into a few times. Uh, Rakuk, do you want to give a try, see if you can pick out any useful information? I know your your, your, your mind is less affected by this kind of madness, but... Not particularly. Alright, well, I think we've probably hit, hit a dead end here. I'll just have to head back to the last fork and choose a different or, direction. There is... An, you tell it. Yeah, there is another tiny crack in the wall that way. Ah, okay. And it really did jumble your brain, didn't it, up there? And uh, if nobody else is going to try the focusing on sounds, we can probably end for the night. Seems good uh, to me. Nope. Um, as you get to here, you can hear sound through the crack, uh, cackling and muttering in the distance. What does it sound like? Cackling and muttering. A mad Darrow. Fair enough. I think we might be approaching retort. Cackling to himself, muttering to himself, arguing with himself. Yeah. That lines hey. up. So far, so good. Wait, is he speaking in other common? Uh, there is not enough to tell. If I'm looking at the map correctly, I'm going to be so mad if it does lead to the way I think it does. <laughs> it just loops back to there. Yeah. He just got us lost in the tunnels. We're following him. This thing. We're following a crazy man, so he could easily just be finding the most roundabout bullshit map. Maybe we should have set like an alarm spell back at like the initial junction to see if he doubles back on us. But <laughs> and then, as far as I know, the fifteenth should be good. Um, football season is starting up, so there is always a chance that on game day, if the Raiders play at home, I might be delayed. Okay. I don't have anything pre-assigned, but that doesn't mean that on game day something might not come up. I will let people know as I find out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sounds good. Great. All right. And that is all for tonight. Thanks to anybody who was watching. Have a good night.